Here we go. Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 32. If you have been missing for a while, make sure you sign up for the email newsletter. The brand new ebook out. Let me bring that up in fact so that you can uh, take a look at that brand new ebook talking about how to improve your photography business. Uh, a lot of really good information. I don't have it featured up here on the website yet. Uh, but there are some, there you go, new ebook, top 10 tips for growing your photography business. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on that ebook, what you would like to see in the next one, because I do have some ideas for my next ebook that I'm going to put out, and the next one's probably going to be free again, which is cool. So uh, make sure you pick that up. All you have to do is sign up for the email newsletter uh, right on the website, right up here on the homepage, and you will get a copy of that email to you automatically. So go ahead and sign up, and uh, you'll get that for free. Plus, you'll get the first ebook, the beginning photographer's ebook, the business ebook, and you'll get uh, the wedding checklist and also my Lightroom plugin. Not Lightroom plugins, I wish I had a Lightroom plugin. Uh, my Lightroom, what's the word that I'm looking for here? Presets, that's it, presets. All right, so a little bit of news today. Wasn't a ton of stuff going on this week. Um, first thing I thought I'd talk about here on DIY Photography, they put together a nice little poll, and they polled, uh, did it say how many people? Uh, 1,000 votes or so, better low light performance. I think that the camera manufacturers have a pretty good handle on this, that they are they're, that they're constantly improving on that and they're doing their best to improve it, but they do need to have something else to talk about besides low light. That's why they're increasing the megapixels. Whether or not they're going to listen to a poll like this, even if it is informal when someone says 60%, uh, my number two, I would agree with in this poll, would be improved focusing. Um, you know, that's probably the definitely my top two. But it's interesting that more megapixels is at the bottom of the list. We have plenty of megapixels. We really don't need many more. Um, you know, I'm happy with my 12 and my D3, D3s. They work great. I can print really big stuff uh, without a problem, and so uh, pretty happy with it overall. Next thing here, uh, primer on the math behind f-stops. If you really care, if you have a very scientific mind, you should head over and take a look at this video. Uh, it talks about and shows you what the math and how the math works when you're setting your f-stops. A lot of people, they need to see or understand that scientific part of photography, which photography is pretty scientific. It might not have started out as that, but nowadays it definitely is. So at least goes into the f-stops and how they exactly work in the lens. And when you're stopping down, closing that hole, opening it back up, allowing a lot of light or a little bit of light, your depth of field, all that stuff. So nice little video talks about it. And uh, so if you're an analytic mind, scientific mind, head over and read that one. Again, all of the things that I'm going to be posting, talking about here, they will be in the description after uh, on YouTube afterwards as well as on the website. So uh, I'll email that link back out or tweet the link back out to the post and then you can click on any of these articles from there. Next thing that I wanted to talk about, which were really cool, uh, this black and white night photos of dormant 18 wheelers at truck stops. The first thing that uh, struck me was, man, these photos are so nice and square and clear and perfect. And, and, I, and it, I got it right away. This guy's shooting with a large format camera. He's actually shooting with an 8x10 camera. That means he's shooting with film and his negatives are 8x10. They're huge negatives. So he's got a ton of detail in this thing. So the photos and the series are really neat. I think he added some extra light, which is fine. 
Uh, that's why they kind of look a little blurry here. You know, they have those kind of, I shouldn't say blurry, I should say soft edges. Uh, but I love how square they are and even. And uh, I think this one here is my favorite because you see some stars and things back in there. Um, really cool stuff and uh, something different. Basically showing, hey, there are really excellent subjects out there. It's just a matter of finding them. The other part that I wanted to talk about with this post is, is that people, I think, forget about other sources of photography. And uh, if you really want to master it, you should be playing with a camera like this one. Okay? A 4x5 large format or uh, an 8x10 camera, that is the camera that separates the men from the boys. If you know how to use a camera like that, whether you are self-taught or whether you uh, go to school like Antonelli or one of those schools like that and you learn it and really learn it well and know how to apply it and when to apply it and when to use this kind of a camera your photography will definitely improve because you spent the extra time to learn something like that that means you have a better grasp of the other parts of photography the focus and you know the composition and all those other things that go along with it and so if you really want to improve you really want to master it you need another challenge go out buy a 4x5 camera buy an 8x10 camera some kind of a view camera and start learning it I'm sure there are plenty of sites out there maybe someday I'll do a video on one but um, it takes a lot more work and a lot more uh, thinking in order to make it make things happen you don't you know there's no sensor there's no autofocus there's no exposure meter in it uh, you know all it is is a piece of film and a lens and a box to keep the light in and that's pretty much it you have your tilts and swings and adjustments and things in there in order to make it work but you need to practice with it so that you understand how it works and uh, I would love the one thing I've been meaning to buy and eventually I will buy it I'm sure is uh, they may actually make an adapter for the Nikons and I think they may make it for a Canon too for a, uh, a Toyo view camera you actually take the a DSLR pop it right on instead of having to use film you could get a digital negative and then you can easily stitch it together uh, that's pretty good I think that's a, a you know shoot your raw files right in there you get a better you get the best of both worlds basically you'll be able to get the coverage of the entire 4x5 frame and um, but you'll still get the tilts and swings and adjustments of that 4x5 so maybe someday I'll invest in one of those I think it'd be really neat I forget the brand though um, it was in my Amazon uh, 4x5 adapter Photo Dicks, that's it. This is the one that I've been thinking about picking up and playing with because I think it would be really cool. And instead of it just being just in the center right there, it actually will move around the frame. So I'm looking I'm looking at my my camera shot here. Like it'll take the first frame like up here in the corner and then another frame and another frame. Move down here and then three and four. Okay, so you can actually get the entire coverage of that entire frame, and uh, so that's really neat. Then you can easily stitch them together, and I think they sell for like two fifty something like that on Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link up to it so that you can grab it. But um, really neat. I want to try it out. Maybe someday I'll invest in one. So interesting stuff. But uh, back to my point: try out a four x five, and you will your photography will go from here. To off the scale wow because you really know what you're doing and uh, so try it all right uh, next thing I thought I would talk about here at Nikon rumors little video about the comparison of the d70 versus the d600 cameras the only thing that I don't agree with this comparison is that he uses aperture priority in this video instead of manual and that's wrong because you're not only comparing, when you're using the aperture priority mode, you're also allowing the cameras that meter, you're comparing the meter as well as the ISO performance, 
rather than just the ISO performance. And so this might be a little bit off. I didn't watch it fully, but um, check it out. Let me know what you think on this. Uh, I definitely think his philosophy is a little bit off. Um, again, for that same reason, you know, because he, he's allowing, you know, the meter has also gotten better in the cameras and more precise. It's not just the ISO that has gotten better. And here he's kind of mixing the two of those, and so I don't think that's, that's a good way to go. But uh, still interesting to see how far we have come since 2004 when the D70 came out. I actually was working for a studio at the time. They had a D70, and uh, then it wasn't that great because I think I'd bought my D200 at the time, and the 200 was a lot better. So, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, an interesting time, but... Um, Still shooting raw way back then. It still made a difference instead of those JPEG file things. You know that. So, um, next thing I wanted to talk about today is our new assignment. New photo assignment this week is... By the way, if you do have any comments you want to add, please post them over to the YouTube video. Uh, Roy's sending me a couple here, and I ha he has a couple ready to go. And so, Roy, send me over a couple more. I could probably do like five, six, something like that. And then we'll keep the keep today's show a little bit shorter. So, oh, uh, new assignment. New photo assignment this week is going to be emotion. All right. I don't care if it's uh, um, anything that you can get an emotion out of. I'm guessing it's going to be something that's living. Great. If you can get an emotion out of something that's inanimate or not living, then you're pretty talented. Uh, but let's show me some emotion. Uh, this can be one of those where it's a series of photos, say three, four, five photos, you know, a nice little picture story showing maybe a range of emotion from happy to sad. I'd like to see it in the same context or the same frame, make it obvious that it's all taking at the, taken at the same time or close to the same time. You know, I don't want you to, you know, say, take a photo from, say, a week ago or two weeks ago and, or, you know, or, you know, say tomorrow and then another one, say, on Friday when that same person is, you know, happy versus sad. You know, it should be in the same context around the same time, same time frame, same scenery, same all that stuff. But give me a nice little picture story. Uh, show me some crying or some happy or sad or whatever it is. Uh, show me that emotion. Let me have it. I'd love to see it. Uh, send those over. I think there'll be some really good, powerful images that we can display. Uh, as always, the photo assignment starts today, and uh, they have to be posted by two Fridays from today at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Photos cannot be from earlier. Uh, they have to start today, and if you upload them to the forum, make sure that you have the exif date when it was originally created rather than or tell me when you know when you shot it but like on Flickr, i can easily see where that is so that's why i always recommend you upload via Flickr. uh the other thing that i'll mention there were a couple of really cool photos that were in here in this assignment but then they disappeared so if you re-upload a photo on Flickr make sure that you are going in and updating the link on your post okay because what happens is you end up with can i see that something that looks like that okay that's not good that means i can't see your photo that means i can't see your submission and that means that uh, you don't get your photo submitted so that's not cool so make sure you're updating those. If you re-upload, you also need to re-add your embed code to the website. So this was my first photo that I liked. They're both pretty much equal. Uh, there were the two of them, these two, from Timmy and from Gabe. Yep, so um, still pretty happy with them. I like how this guy's hanging in the air or something, whether he's hanging or maybe it's just a trick angle something along those lines but i think it works uh i like the shallow depth of field the framing could use a little work but um you know you have all this extra space over here i think maybe it could have been a little bit tighter maybe shot vertically 
uh, maybe just crop square, something like that. But I think it's a little bit too loose. A little could have been just a hair tighter, a little bit better. Um, this one, however, I like. I like the framing. I like how tight it is. And you know what? Timmy's right. Who needs toys when you have mud? That is a hundred percent true. Um, you know, when we're kids, especially boys, girls might not understand this, but when we're boys, you know, we love getting dirty and, you know, playing in the mud. I know I love playing in the sandbox when I was a little kid, taking my matchboxes out in the sandbox and playing with them. Now, see, I still have them somewhere. I think I do. Wow, we have a lot of questions. That's cool. Uh, so, yeah, so, um, let's see if I can find them. That might be interesting to play with them one day. Anyway. Uh, so those are the two photos I picked today. Make sure you send in your uh, photos, and I'll get that post up on the website, and you can post them over. And again, it is Emotion, posted by next Friday. Photos taken in the next, was it, 10, 15, 10, 14 days, whatever it is, 13 days, by 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So, um, I think that is it. Yep, so let's get into some questions questions all right so question from tr mania what kind of filters do you recommend and what brand uh i've always been a fan of the circular polarizers and the neutral densities some of the colored graduated filters are good um i still have some older Koken filters probably 10 12 13 years old maybe 15 years old i've had them for a while uh, B and W. I've always liked their filters. Not a fan of um, pretty much anybody else. Maybe some of the higher end Nikon ones are good, uh, but you really, in order to get the best quality, you need to be using the more expensive ones. And so stick with the you know don't cheap out. Anything less than you know fifty or seventy five bucks is junk. And stay away from your UV filters and all those other things. Um, you know, just the protective filters are just a waste. Uh, you really don't need them. You shouldn't be using them, so stay away from them. By the way, I have a video on protection, on camera protection. Uh, it talks about outdoor lens, a lot of other things. Uh, just do a search for Kazillo camera protection. You'll come up with it. I'll also put a post into this. Uh, Kazillo protection. Interesting interesting search term there you go camera equipment and protection there's the video and I was actually out in the snow one day and talked about that there you go camera equipment and protection so that was a that was a nice little video talked all about it all right landscape photography neutral density is going to be the one that's essential uh, if you're the one who can design a DSLR, what would you build in? Something weird. Well, the first thing is, is it has to be big enough for my paws. Um, that's actually 13 inches from there to there. No, I'm sorry, 11 inches from there to there. And uh, I actually measured that because of 4x5 cameras back at Antonelli. And so that was really important to know. Um, I'm not going to get into that today, but that was why, because of 4x5 cameras and how it works with exposure and all that good stuff. So, uh, what would I build in? Something weird. I can't think of anything. At least not off the top of my head. I I really can't think of anything uh, that I would add. I think I think I'm pretty happy. Oh, you know what? The other day, oh, this drove me crazy. Oh my goodness, I have to talk about this. The other day, I was helping out another photographer, teaching him how to use his his equipment. And he had a 7D. And if you're a Canon guy, I don't know how you use your camera. I really don't. The buttons just don't make sense to me at all when I picked this camera up. We had to look in the manual in order to learn how to change some of the simplest functions on this camera. And, you know, some of the buttons on there, you would push the button down, turn the dial. Some of them you would one of the button sequences you had to push down one button right next to the dial that you had to turn and just the combinations and the things and the the ergonomics of the camera just do not make sense to me and i don't understand that uh i'm glad i'm a nikon guy i'm glad i'm happy with my nikons because i really don't think i could switch to canon 
after touching that camera, playing with that camera, it just does not make sense. So, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure it's the same with other vehicles and cars, you know, you get in, you know, like I'm a GM, General Motors car guy. And so, you know, you get in another GM car and all the buttons are the same and the, you know, even five years newer, the buttons and things are very similar, you know, where the high beams are and the, the, the turn, the way the turn signal works and the, uh, windshield wipers, four ways, all that stuff. But then it's completely different when you go to a Ford or a Dodge or something like that. And I know it's the same thing with, with cameras, but God, it just did not make sense to me. And we actually had to look up how to change some of these functions and it should be intuitive. And to me, the cannons are just not intuitive. So good luck with that, guys. I hope you're doing well with that, the cannon guys. Um... Uh, uh, concert photography with a D3100. What would you take and what would you do? Uh, the You're going to have multiple problems with a D3100. Number one is going to be autofocus. Because you're talking low light. You're not going to have a lot of uh, light in order to focus. 3518, Sigma 10 to 20, 55 to 200, or an 18 to 55. The 18 to 55 and the 30, 55 to 200 both have variable apertures, which means you have very little light coming in, which means it's going to be bad. Um, you know, your focus is going to get even worse. Um, I don't know, dude. You're going to have to try it and see what works. Uh, you know, uh, it's very spoiled when shooting concerts are low light with a 2.8 lens and a, you know, a pro body it definitely makes a huge difference there's a reason for it um, and the big thing you're gonna have a problem with is that autofocus I guarantee it um, it's gonna be difficult it's gonna be difficult so good luck with that keep trying I would say take care I wouldn't take that 10 to 20 I think that's gonna be a waste maybe that 35 it's gonna give you the most light um, but then you're going to be cropping a lot in order to get a little, you know, you're not going to be able to get tight. So, um, maybe just sacrifice your tightness for better framing and, uh, you know, better overall composition. Maybe that's the, the better way to go. So, anyway, what do you think about camera noise? If you're publishing the limits, pushing the limits, sorry. I said 3200 or high level entry level DSR, you'll see noise even in focus areas. What do you think? Uh, number one thing, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. I actually have a video on it. I have to find it though. I'm trying to remember what the name of it. Basically, it talks about your exposure. Make sure your exposure is good. If you're just randomly pushing your ISO up and you're underexposing, it's going to make it look even worse. Okay? Or even if you're keeping your ISO lower, it's say 1600 or 800 and your exposure is off, it's going to look worse. You can have a lot of noise, a lot of grain, your colors are going to look weird, you're not going to have good detail, might look slightly soft, and so that's going to be really important to make sure your exposures are on. Paying attention to that histogram is going to be real important, and so... Um, pay attention to that I think that's gonna be pretty um, that's gonna be the big thing you know sounds like this is the same guy by the way with that same camera with a d3200 with the concert photography thing <sighs> you have some upgrading to do pal I don't know whether to tell you to buy a lens first or whether to tell you to buy a camera first but I'm probably gonna recommend a camera at this point since you want to do Concerts, you probably need to step up to a 70, was it a set in D7100? Probably where you need to go. Uh, if you don't have a DSLR right now, if a clean choice for camera gear, what would it be? Where would I go? What would I buy? Well, with the, with the experience of where I'm at, and I know what I like and what I don't like, similar to that conversation that I think I just talked about before with the way the, the cannons work, I would definitely go with some kind of an icon, but obviously it's going to depend on my budget. Um, you know, if if the the budget fits with a 
you know, a six thousand dollar body, and I still have uh, room for you know three or four, two or three thousand dollar lenses, then heck yeah, I'm gonna go with a D4 and you know all 2.8 glass and you know really good stuff. If I have a twenty thousand dollar budget, if I don't, if I have a five thousand dollar budget, then it might be a little bit tougher. Maybe it's gonna be a D600 and a 70 to 200 and a 24 to 70 you know and that's it then i gotta save up for more so it all it always comes down to budget every the world revolves around how much money you have unfortunately and that's just the way it is there's nothing we can do about it you know um buying camera gear is is definitely one of those uh i definitely would not buy a sony someone else says like uh don't think so uh i like my nikons i think they work well this is also why I recommend going in and playing with a camera before you buy it. Find a camera store that's around your area and go and play with it. Or borrow one from a friend or rent one online. Play with it before if, before you buy one. Because if you don't like the button settings and the way it's set up and the way it works or the way it feels in your hand or the way it auto focuses or uh, whatever that thing is that you don't like or don't like, you're not going to like the camera and you you won't realize that it's the camera that's the issue whereas if you have a camera that you jive with and you you have that connection with you can pick up and just use you don't have to think about it you're able to concentrate on the connection you have with the person or the subject whatever it is and your composition and all those other things can make a huge difference in your photography so um play with that camera uh, and out of the body before you buy it please gonna make a big difference how do the expensive Nikon lenses handle higher f-stops and how are they compared to Sigma Tamron Sigma yada yada uh, to be totally honest I very rarely shoot in the higher f-stops at 16 22 uh, if it is it's a product photo and um, they're gonna be better just like anything you're spending more money on the Canons and Nikon lenses and it's for a reason. It's because they're better. They have better glass. They have better processes. They have better autofocus. That's why you're spending more money on them versus the Sigmas. Um, Tamron's, in my opinion, are pretty low-end lenses. I think in the compared to the car world, like I was mentioned before, I think Tamron's are kind of like a Kia. Um, you know, Nikon and and Canon right now. I think they're 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 not the super high end. You know. They're not a Maserati, you know, they're not a Ferrari, uh, but I'd say, you know, Canon and Nikon are probably your BMWs and your Mercedes, you know, some guys like a BMW, some guys like a Mercedes, they're probably pretty up, pretty far up there, and it's probably a good comparison for them, but, uh, you know, the Tamron, I think they're pretty low end, in my opinion, I've, n I've never seen a one that I've been super happy with functionality wise focus wise and you know the way it handles and you know smoothness of the lens whereas the canons and the nikons i think are, are pretty good and pretty smooth and uh happy with overall you know you don't have chromatic aberrations and uh, all those little things in those higher end lenses and uh, you know the better coatings all those things you're you're paying you're getting what you're paying for with that do one or two more here and i think that's it uh, what about iFi cards, which claims to send your images wireless to your printer, iPhone, computer? What about them? I've never used one personally. If I need to shoot to a computer, I'm going to shoot through a cable, typically, because it's going to be faster. I want to shoot raw. I want to shoot right to the computer. If I had a need for one, maybe I'd invest in one. But as of right now, I haven't seen any need at all. So I'm um, probably not going to be trying one anytime soon um, you know I really don't need it if I need to preview images typically I'll just grab a card pop it in the can in a card reader in the laptop and then pull the images over or auto import the images over and that's it or shoot tethered if I can and shoot it right to the computer and then I see full resolution right in Lightroom auto import all that stuff and it works out fine if your camera breaks down and you have not have no backup do you try something with your iphone no uh well i guess if i had to i probably would but this is why i carry two bodies to all of my gigs um not that i had a camera breakdown the other day but uh, the, i had a gig the other night and um 
I ended up using both bodies. I used one for one setup and one for another. If one of them would have broken down, I could have gone to the other body. You know, I didn't have any problems. Um, I guess if I had to, I would. But probably not, you know, I'd... I'd I don't know. I guess it will depend, you know. It's it's one of those things. Where are you at, you know, is it the wedding and you, is it the beginning of the day? You know, I'm going to start making some frantic phone calls to get some more equipment. If it's the end of the day and I'm going to say to the couple, hey, you know, my camera just took a shit and, um, sorry, you know, it, it happens. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe both of them went or something happened, you know, you, you really never know. Then you say to them, hey, what do you want me to do? Uh, just a thought. Just a thought. So there was one other question here on Facebook somebody asked, uh... What if I attach AFS lenses to a D7100? Why should one attach AFS? Number one, AFS is their name. It refers to the fact that it's a quieter lens, AFS for silent. It's a newer lens, and it's all electronic. And they're also better lenses. They're newer, they have newer coatings, newer glass, better quality, all that stuff. So it's not just about paying more for the lens it's about the fact that it is a better lens okay the AFS series lenses are better lenses better everything all the way around it's not just that they're more money alright um, let's see I'll take a look one more here uh, <laughs> uh, Roy just asked me a question here he's actually sending me messages over Skype with uh, some of my questions so thank you very much Roy I appreciate that and he said, if I had any, if I could buy any car, what would it be? Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, or a BMW? It would definitely be a Ferrari, but it would have to be a custom Ferrari, and it would probably cost a lot of money. You know, I'm six foot four, over 300 pounds, so I'm probably not going to fit in a standard Ferrari. And so it probably end up being a custom one, you know, go to them and say, hey, here's a million dollars, you know, maybe some custom car that I can, I can actually fit in. Um, you know, maybe I'd find a basketball player or something that, you know, they, that they're fitting in, what are they buying? Um, not really a big Bentley fan or Rolls or anything like that. I, I definitely would love to have a, a Ferrari someday, but um, I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath. <laughs> so uh, I think that is it for today. Good questions today, guys. A um, little bit longer broadcast than I thought we'd end up doing. But, hey, uh, if you do have any other additional questions, I will do my best to answer them. You can always uh, post them up on Facebook, send them over on Twitter, and I'll do my best to answer them uh, in next week's show. Uh, make sure you get your uh, photos shot and then posted over on the forum for the new assignment. And uh, let me know how you enjoyed the new ebook. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Keep shooting. See ya.